Hi, I'm Wack. Hi, and I'm Pat. Thanks for joining us another week uh, for the Weekly Orbit. And this is the week of February the 16th. Uh, it's been a really great week. We've got tons to talk about, Wack. Um, but are you excited about ETH Denver? It's coming up in a couple of weeks. No, it, you know, it's really strange. Like, um, I'm kind of excited about it, but it also oh, almost feels like it's not happening. I don't know why I'm not like in that headspace yet. So it feels like something that's happening really far away, but it's like two weeks away. So I, know. I think I need to get into that zone yet. And I'm not quite there yet. So um, it's going to it's gonna hit me like a truck, I think, like next week. I still need to like get all my ticket stuff sorted out. It's done. I need to like put out that app and stuff. But there's there's a bunch of things that I still need to do that I've not done yet. So um, that, that, that needs to fix up soon. So, yeah, no, I know. Yeah. Um, Ken had messaged me about the, um, the liftoff, mm -hmm. um, that's going on during the convention and, uh, I have to respond to him. I've been so busy, but I realized like, holy cow, this is like in two weeks, <laughs> I got, I got, I've already started thinking about it. Um, yeah. but yeah, we'll have that. We'll be talking about the liftoff, uh, towards the end of the, the program, but let's yeah. get into markets first. Uh, exciting. I mean, Ethereum has been on a tear the last, uh, couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is, uh, from coin gecko and I, that's a 24 hour chart. Let's go to the seven day, uh, seven day. We're currently at 2,851. Mm -hmm. Um, it's up 3% over the last 24 hours, but you can see here is last seven days, 16% increase in price last two weeks, 24%. Um, man, it's ripping and yep. let's take a look at RPL. Um, RPL is, has had a big spike overnight. Let's go to the five day. That's the one minute chart. Yeah. That's the five minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we're, we're up into the right, as you can see, let's, but let's take a closer look. Um, here's the coin got go. I like to, you know, we always like to compare it to ETH price. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if. We're at $33.38 in US dollars. That's up about 7% over the last 24 hours, which is pretty good. It's more than ETH. But last week, we we're at a ratio of 0 0.01189. We are currently at a ratio of 0 0.01168. Okay, that's, that's about less than 2% decline against ETH mm -hmm. in ETH terms. Um, and I, I just want to put this out for RPL haters. Like, oh my God, the world is falling or, you know, that's the end of the world. But let's compare our to Lido, which is our competitor. You know, if we look at their ratio, it was at 0 0.00118 last week. It's currently at 0 0.00116. Guess what? It's down about 2% against ETH as well. So compared to our peers, we're kind of doing just what they're doing as well. It's just, you know... Just my opinion on markets, uh, Whack. At the beginning, it's always the big players that, in, in traditional finance as well. The big players push the market in the beginning. As the bull market matures, money starts falling down, down to the uh, lower caps. And the lower caps kind of bring in the behind of the bull market. And then the market will go into a bear. The, the small caps f fall more. People gravitate towards big and the cycle goes back and forth. And I think, Wack, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're kind of in that early stage of the bull market where ETH and BTC are leading the way. Yeah, pretty much. So there's a whole lot to like unpack about the markets right now. The first of all, you know, like you said, BTC and ETH are going gangbusters. Like they're, they're doing really well. They're performing really well. With the Rocket Pool, you know, we've had a couple of really good days, but that we have to put in context has come off the back of quite a bad time like you said you know the the big guys are going at it and the little guys are kind of getting left behind and rocket rocket pools rpl has been one of those tokens so much so that on the eth ratio we just hit a new post atlas low of 0 0.0106 so that is you know a little bit below we were a couple of a few months ago when mm. we hit 0 0.011 um 111 so that was you know the previous low we we hit a new low after that so that feels really bad. So yeah. I feel like, you know, a lot of the excitement in the market that we've had has kind of been tempered by that. Like, you know, the, the wider market is doing really well. The RPL token price against the US dollar is fine. Like it's pretty, pretty decent, you know, 50%, less than 50% away now from all time highs, which is really, really great to see at this stage in the market. You know, it's setting us up for a really nice bull run in dollar terms. The ETH 
the ETH price, that's the one that, you know, most of us care about because we need to maintain that ratio for our validators. And that it's just, that was the only pair for so long that that's like the value anchor that people really have for RPL in their minds. And if we look at that, you know, in the one year, RPL is down. 26 percent um since atlas last year at this point in the, on the coin gecko you can che- see it here like yep. in the one year chart we're down 26 percent. but if you look at the eth page in the one year we're, that's up 77 percent. so um yep that's 77 percent. so that 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 difference shows you that you know the rpl price against eth on the one year is down bad <laughs> like down really really oh, yeah. bad no and doubt. like that you know that sadly is still uh, leading to a lot of negativity in the community and uh, people are seeing that you know eth is doing well now you know they're down really bad on their ratio by 50 percent, basically in eth value um from where they were a year ago if not more you know if you bought right at the peak of atlas then you're down like 60 plus percent 60 ish percent um against eth which is horrible feeling but um I think what's happening is as people are seeing green on the markets and not seeing RP, well, this was like three days ago, right? They were seeing that RPL was kind of getting left behind a little bit. Um, there was a lot of, there was a lot of negative ten- sentiment in, in the rocket pool space. Uh, like, you know, on, on ETH finance, people were just like rocket pools dead. <laughs> and it was like, guys, what are you talking about? And like, even in discord, you know, a whole lot of people were just kind of like capitulating. They were like, you know, this is pointless. I'm just going to swap back to ETH. There was a whole lot of negativity. Yeah. So I sell think at the bottom. I think you should sell at the that's bottom. That's literally what's been happening. <laughs> I mean, like, on, in guys. all honesty, like, that's yeah. like, it's kind of a meme, right? Like, you know, you buy high, sell low, but people were literally doing that. Like a whole lot of people were capitulating mm-hmm. and like, um, or the sentiment was definitely like in that, you know, doldrums. So there's, there's, there's a lot more nuance to this than just like, Hey, you know, green candles and green candles are really nice, but mm-hmm. um, I think people are like, there's still some ways to go when you kind of like look at the bigger picture. And I think that, you know, everything's going to be fine. Like, you know, you were saying earlier that, you know, within the, like the beginning, very beginning, I think of the mania phase now, which might last another year or so potentially, depending on how things go, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, but RPL's positioned well, right? And the main thing that RPL has going for it that other services don't is we've got these amazing upgrades coming this year. And I feel like it's just like perfect timing that they're just going to stack on top of each other, you know, for the next year. And hopefully that is going to be what really propels um, Rocket Pool as a protocol and RPL as a token up to some really cool heights. Yeah. And if my thesis is correct about the second half of the bull run, you know, where small caps take the lead, well, guess what? The second half of the bull run, we're kind of expecting all these upgrades coming, right? Mm-hmm. And a kind of maybe a, a market refocus on staking because <clears throat> the uh, EIPs that'll be coming with uh, uh, Petra, Petra are going to mm-hmm. be you know, squarely focused on uh, staking. So you get that whole narrative. You've, then you've got Saturn, you know, one, Saturn two, mega pools, uh, new tokenomics. Like <laughs> there's a lot coming and kind of, yeah. like you said, right? Perhaps square, you know, we're going to hit it right at the right time as well. So yeah. keep your, keep your chin up folks. Um, these daily market things up and down, up and down, you know, take a, you know, zoom out a little bit, you know, take a breath. We'll be, we'll be fine. We're going to be okay. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, this was um, yesterday overnight. We had the, um, it was the end of the uh, period, the uh, end of the 28 days. And um, our PIP 30 is in effect. So this would be the second tree of six. Mm-hmm. And just to revi- re- I pull this up just to review <clears throat> what is the RP 30, our PIP 30, and how does it get phased in? So the tree changes uh, have been implemented. Rewards will ramp smoothly from old system to a new one. So Last month in January <clears throat> was tree number one. So that means out of the uh, five sixths of the old system and one sixth of the new system, <clears throat> uh, each subsequent tree will move one sixth more to the new system. And by tree six, we'll have an entirely new system. Mm-hmm. Um, withdrawal threshold will decrease after tree three uh, to 100% of bonded ETH. And again, after tree six, down to 60% of bonded ETH. And then finally, we need a smart contract changed for withdrawal will become a two-step process and threshold will becomes 15% of borrowed ETH. So yeah. uh, I guess this is a, the TLDR on that is if you're, we're, we're starting to focus, we're kind of squishing down the rewards, RPL rewards down to those who are between 10 and 15% collateral. And um, I noticed it last night. I was like, oh, I got a little more RPL than, you know, I normally do. So it's starting and um, 
it's nice to see this the system is is in place. You have any thoughts, real quick? Yeah. So you know the community voted for this, and it's it's coming along really nicely. And uh, a lot of node operators are now seeing, especially those at the lower collateral levels, that they're getting a little bit of a boost in their rewards from what they were getting before. One thing to remember as well is you know that even if you are at a higher collateral level, there's still a chance that you'll be getting more in rewards. It's only when you start getting to the very high collateral levels where you'll start feeling the pinch. And if you are on um, 16 ETH validators instead of LEB8s, then you're going right. to start feeling that a lot sooner than if you're on LEB8s. So um, the main thing is, you know, if you haven't gone to LEB8s yet, that's the first thing you should do is get onto LEB8s. And then after that, um, like this is, the, you know, this is the, the the new way that things are happening. And it's actually really exciting because we're hoping that, you know, yesterday, for example, I saw a whole lot more node operators getting up above 10% than I was yeah. a few months ago. Like there was a lot of buying coming in for people trying to get above 10% because they knew that the rewards that they're going to get this time for being above 10% are actually higher than it would have been a few months ago as as a percentage of their collateral. So um, yeah. that's, that's that's actually really good to see as well. So um, I think, you know, this will actually be finalized with Saturn 1, most likely, is RPIP30 will be like... Um, completed you know with the last point it says with a smart contract change withdrawal will um, become a two-step process and threshold will become 15 percent of borrowed ETH so that's where that's what we're heading towards but that will be completed probably with Saturn 1 which I think will be in about six months potentially after um, uh, Houston so yep. that's 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 what we're going with I think yeah it's going without a hitch um, mm -hmm. so talk about the smoothing pool it paid out last night as well uh, we had a pool of about 367 ETH which was a, a little bit above average, uh, better than last month. Last month we were at 294. So a nice little bump there. Um, you know, no all time highs, but I think as we see on chain activity start to increase, um, we're gonna start to see a little bit more uh, or a steady amount into the smoothing pool. And the other thing about the smoothing pool that you should note now is like a whole bunch of validators coming online for like, you know, Puffer, not Puffer, sorry, for Ether5, for Swell, for these liquid restaking mm -hmm. token services. And that means that, you know, the chance of you getting a block becomes even more difficult now. So um, a regular node operator, you're going to get a block like every four months now, I think, or even more than four months. So right. that makes the smoothing pool even more attractive because you'll be getting those rewards every every month. And, you know, they're trickling in every day. Whereas if you're just, a, you know, if you're just on, on, out on your own, then you might go many, many, many months without getting any proposals. So With zero. Yeah, that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, you'll get nothing. Okay, on to uh, some other things. Just uh, we were talking about sediment, about rocket pool, mm -hmm. and other people are noticing. Uh, Anthony Sassano posted out on uh, Farcaster the other day this nice tweet: "Rocket pool revenge are coming soon." And he cites the um, Jasper proposal about Eigenlayer. Um, he also talks about or uh, cites the article about Houston upgrade, which is coming very soon, and then um, the Bon. Uh, direct capture uh, that was uh, one of Valdorf's uh, proposals for tokenomics reform. So people are noticing, and um, what's come about this week is uh, I was saying last week Seamus, but I apparently it's I was corrected. It's it's Samus. Samus. It's a jam, Japanese character. Game character. <laughs> Game character. Yeah. Sorry, man. I'm a boomer. I don't <laughs> I don't follow that stuff. But uh, okay, so I, I'm corrected. So Samus put together um, a cohesive proposal taking four, remember last week we talked about, I think there was about 20 or so different proposals. And um, Samus has taken four of those, packaged them together into a cohesive proposal. So they put, uh, number one was bond reduction. Uh, that's Valdor's idea. Uh, that That's where we go from, you know, eight ETH mini pools to perhaps you know, four and four, and then you get 1.5 ETH after that, or maybe six, and then 1.5, 1.5. Mm -hmm. uh, number two is commission cut diverted to RPL stakers. So that's where you can decide, hey, I want to run ETH only. I don't want to put up RPL. Well, that's cool. You can do that. You'll get um, more commission than you would if you did Lido CSM. And then the rest of that, you know, we take the 14% divided up. So part of your commission will go to those who did stake with RPL and they'll be paid in ETH. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's great. And then number three, universal variable commission. Okay. That's where we're going to, we're stuck at that static 14 
uh, percent, right? So this would move it up and down. Yeah, uh, based on, on the deposit pool dynamics. Yep. So when the deposit four, pool is full, yeah. Per, protect our ETH from underperforming node operators. So uh, this was kind of cool. We're you know whack. We're starting to see this. We started at this really. We had hey, let's st brainstorm ideas. We had twenty, and then now this. I mean, all some really great ideas have come through the process, and now we're starting to squeeze that down into maybe something more cohesive that the community will come to consensus on, and then eventually we'll have probably a, um, an RPIP to vote on this stuff. You know, so it's nice to see, like you know, week after week, we're starting to see progress on these fronts. Do you have any thoughts on the uh, cohesive proposal here? Yeah, so this is the second one we've seen so far. And uh, I kind of want to defend you for a second before we carry on. So if you scroll up, this person's, you know, Samus, his name is Orange Samus. And Orange is very much associated with Irish, like certain parts of Irish culture as well. So it's plausible that, you know, it's realistic that you would think it's Orange Seamus because that's, that's the thing. So, you know, boom, Boomers here, like helping Boomers. So I'm totally like <laughs> defending you here. So, yeah. <laughs> but, but going on, but going on, like this is, you know, this is a really nice, you know, amount of work that uh, Samus has put into into this here and like has done a good job with um, kind of getting the ideas together. And I think that's really cool. Like, you know, the he really crunches the numbers about um, the RP, no ETH or ETH valid, ETH plus RPL validators that people might set up. And it's I think that's going to be one of those really cool um, innovations that is going to like tweak how the protocol works. Because as we get more people with ETH only coming online, then those who stake with RPL are going to get really cool rewards. And if we get too many people with RPL, then their rewards are going to get diluted and they'll be like, why do I need RPL? I'll just go to ETH and they'll move back and forth potentially from those two two groups. And I think yeah. we'll find a really nice balance where, you know, the majority of RPL I think will be staked um, going forward. And um, we'll, we're going to see those really cool like fluctuations happening where um, I'm hoping, right, that a whole bunch of whales come online who have ETH only validators because they're going to be paying me. And I was like, yeah, this is really cool. You know, like, I'm really happy to take your money. And there's a whole lot of people in our situation, you know, who have RPL as well. And we're going to be getting really nice outsized ETH and um, RPL rewards because they won't be getting any RPL rewards either. So we'll be getting those. We'll be getting a boost, super boosted ETH rewards. It's going to be really nice. Like there's some really cool ideas like in the system. And one of the things that, you know, we have to remember is like Rocket Pool has, has stagnated. Like I know that might be hard for for people to admit right but the fact of the matter is that you know we've been at like this 560,000 our ETH level we've been at that node operator ETH of about two like a quarter of a million like 250,000 or so for quite a while now you know like we've 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 stagnated we're not bringing on new node operator ETH and that's this these these ideas are going to supercharge that and I'm really hoping that you know this is a path to get us to 22% which is you know why we've said we'll self self limit but Go, we've been stuck at like that two and a half to three percent range for a year and you know as much as we had these high aspirations that you know uh, high expectations as well that atlas was going to help us get like higher than this and move up sadly it hasn't materialized and mm -hmm. um, we we mm -hmm. need to we need to do or die and i think um this is a really great thing that the community is doing and it's really great that you know like like i said the sentiment has been really low but we've got a bunch of people like from outside the rocket pool community who are just like guys what are you talking about like rocket pool's doing some really cool things here and anthony sasano like you know leading the banner for that was really yep. really wonderful to see like i have so much respect for anthony and like he's just yeah. Like he's he's just a, such a great like Ethereum aligned person and and he sees that Rocket Pool has so much value right and like you know all it's going through all of these things so for him to like point that out was really really great to see. Yeah, we'll talk yeah. about Anthony in a moment here um, with regard to Starknet, um, but I, I think right now the there's three markets we Rocket Pool is only open to one of those three. Um, if you've got ETH and you got RPL come here of oh, the door is open but if you got only eth the door is closed if you only got rpl the door is closed what these proposals i think are going to do is open them open all three doors so yeah. if you've just got rpl you want to earn some yield on it you can put it in if you want to you know what i don't want to own any i love eth that's all i want it's the super token i don't want to touch anything else we got that for you too and hey if you want to do both and perhaps really boost your eth yields by staking your RPL with your node, 
we got that. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm really excited. I think these these new tokenomics that are coming in are going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. And we also got like steps towards that with uh, with um, notes as well. So they'll be taking steps yep. towards that as well. So this is this is like there's a lot of really exciting stuff coming from Rocket Pool. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Jasper, uh, just a dovetail on the. Um, on the commission cut. I, I think we should rename that by the way. I don't like the idea of commission cut. It's a, first thing I think is what, Oh, the commission's 14%. So what is it going down to 10? I think maybe a commission, I don't know. Do you have any, any ideas? And, yeah. Commission <laughs> tweaking. Yeah. I had, a, I had one earlier this morning and I totally forgot it was a good one, but maybe we should re rename that. Cause I think that does confuse. I saw people in discord. They're asking about commission cuts and they're like, Oh wait, it's, but I don't, you know, it's going to go down in my commission and like, no, 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 no. So I, maybe we, uh, for marketing purposes, we'll have to come up with something, uh, a little more understandable. Yeah. But, uh, Jasper says here, um, he, he believes a rocket pool version three, V3 will have the greatest tokenomics at any protocol stake with RPL for seven and a half. This is one of the proposals stake here, right? Yeah. Stake, you know, this could change, but, uh, stake with RPL for 7.5% commission and the 6.5% extra goes to nodes. That's without, without RPL. Uh, pardon me. Yeah. yeah. That didn't make sense. Stake without <laughs> RPL gets seven and a half percent. And that six and a half goes to nodes who stake RPL and then only nodes like, um, uh, node set stake RPL. So the effects compound if one half, so basically you could double your, your yield on mm -hmm. your ETH. If you stake your RPL, essentially Jasper, yeah. so Jasper is out there leading the charge, you know, Jasper, spreading the good like, news. Honestly, like Jasper has been amazing recently. Yeah. Like on, like I, I love Jasper. Like he's, he has another one of those people like who's carrying the rocket pool banner and, and flying that flag, like amazingly well, like out there in the world. And I have so much love for him, even though like sometimes what he says, like can be subject to scrutiny, like here people are like not sure what the numbers are going to be and like, you know, how it's going to all play out. But Jasper's getting the ideas and like the seeds of ideas out there and you know, people would need the exposure right over and over and over again to come across these ideas before they start like paying attention because that's just how people's brains work. And the fact that he's out there, like, you know, banging this drum and like flying that flag, like honestly, he's just doing the lord's work like he's doing really really Absolutely. great stuff so you know and huge shout out to jasper yeah but you know yeah. to your credit whack back in late fall when lido came out with their csm proposal you were banging the drum like guys we gotta get to the drawing board hmm. and here we are several months later and like these proposals are just gonna i they, they're far superior to csm to be yeah. honest with you so, you package them together with, i think with, we're going to be in a good spot with some of them, like when you look at it, like if you go, if you only have four ETH and you go to Lido, you there's a chance that you'll still be better off, like even with some of these. And maybe even, it might even be the case with eight ETH. So if you take two LEB4s, like Lido's, whatever the equivalent will be, because they'll have four ETH validators. If you even take two of them, it might be that that's more profitable. But as soon as you get to those, you know, 1.5s being available to you with Rocket Pool, then the numbers just aren't even comparable anymore. And even then, like, you know, if you tweak the numbers in certain ways, you can start being profitable from your very first validator with Rocket Pool mm -hmm. as well. But, you know, th the reality is that the majority of people who stake, you know, won't be staking with only four ETH or only six no. ETH, because at that point, the profitability of staking is really like, not there unless you know it's a passion project right. of sorts um sure. you know the price of eth will have to appreciate a lot for you to even cover your hardware costs and stuff like that but for right. those people who've got like 32 eth 64 eth 100 eth and there's a whole lot of people like that in, you know in the rocky pool community already those people are going to get some really nice juicy rewards like going forward right. And we're going to attract a whole lot more of those people as well. Because if you're a solo staker right now, and if you've got like, say, 10 validators, you can still be a solo staker, move half of your solo stake to Rocket Pool. You would bring online like literally 20, 30 times more validators. Your rewards are going to be massively higher. Mm -hmm. You get the best of both worlds. You can still be a solo staker. You can be a Rocket Pool node operator. Everybody wins. It's going to be a really nice design. And I think that people are starting to like hear about it now. And we're going to keep it going. Yeah. The last thing on this, uh, Sima says, on, um, this is a response again to the commission cut, um, where the extra yield you get isn't coming from a fixed commission cut from your own mini pool. It's coming from all the ETH only operators giving a cut of their commission to one big pot 
which is then split up by RPL stakers. So just to kind of clarify that, um, that six and a half percent in like Jasper's example of that commission of ETH is going into a giant pool. And if you are an RPL staker um, with your node, you're going to be able to withdraw from that. Or that's going to come to you. Yep. Uh, the more ETH that ETH only pools we set up, the bigger the that bigger pool gets, mm -hmm. the more profitable it is to be an RPL staker. So yep. it's a, uh, I think that market dynamics where everything's going to balance is it's going to be really elegant. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Well, last thing on this. Um, well, what's the implementation implementation here of these, save these four. Um, and Samus says, I think we could implement section two and three, which is the commission cut and the universal variable commission before one and four, which is the sublinear bonding and our ETH protection. And Samus uh, says, maybe push for, uh, number two and three in Saturn one, and then one and four in Saturn two. So just to give you a timeline that's kind of perhaps where we're going for this. Uh, do you have any thoughts on the timeline for these uh, four? I think it's all really in flux. It depends on, you know, what the team can do and how it's all going to work out because we still don't know when Saturn one will be. And there's this idea that it'll be six months after Houston mm -hmm. on give or take. Um, and I think that might be right, but there's going to be a couple of things that already need to go into that update. Like, um, you know, our 30 finalized is going to go into that update. We're going to have, um, other votes that already passed, like, um, staking without, um, adding more RPL. Um, if you're below 10%, you just have to bring 10% of RPL instead of bringing it all about percent before you can stake more ETH. So those are some of the things that, you know, have already passed in the PDAO and now we need to get onto the actual protocol. So um, I'm not sure how it's all going to work out with those changes as well. So I can't really say right now what is going to go where. All I know basically is that the community is working on this. The community is working really hard on this. These are still open questions. Like we still don't know what the tokenomics are going to look like. We're still not sure, you know, what we're going to be voting on or what we're not going to be voting on. Like, you know, will we vote, be voting on a couple of different visions that people are going to come up with and like work together? Like, will we have competing ideas of what the protocol should look like? What, how is it going to go? Like, so there's too many unknowns right now to say uh, what's going to happen and when. The, just the general direction is mm -hmm. incredibly positive. So that's why I'm kind of leaning on more uh, instead of, um, you know, trying to put things into slots when we don't know where the slots are. Sure. Yeah. Okay. On to our next, this is the big one this week, Starknet. Okay. They've been hinting at a token for a couple of years, mm -hmm. I think, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, they announced as if you haven't heard yet, um, they're, finally releasing their token. Um, and it's, uh, we're talking about Anthony Sassano being such a good steward for Ethereum. And he's been pounding the drum about solo stakers being able to be beneficiaries of airdrops. And typically they're not, um, they, the airdrop comes out usually given to, uh, those who were building on the protocol or they're using it. And, uh, Starknet, to their credit, allocated 22% of their tokens to uh, validators. And uh, of course, Rock, Rock, sorry, oh, go ahead. Carry on. Uh, no, okay, uh, and then I'll, I'll correct okay. something you just said. Yeah. Yeah. And um, now I, I wrote in a, in a little cast here that proportionally ETH stakers are getting more than 10 times the amount of Stark tokens than Starknet users. So uh, there's, um, I think I wrote it down here. We got um, 20, uh, there's 22% of tokens are going to 19,000 different um, validators. And then 51% of tokens are going to a half, over half a million users. Mm -hmm. If you figure that out, proportionally, it's about 10x more going to uh, stakers, which is awesome. Now, there's been some little problem with the rollout with this. Um, and it was particular with Rocket Pool. Uh, where are we here? Up, oh, back one. There he is. And uh, the, so, a lot of the list they were using, uh, perhaps it was from Rated. Dot Network, uh, wasn't all inclusive and excluded a lot of um, operators. So, to uh, Jasper doing what he does, he connected the team with uh, Starknet folks. They've been talking, and Langers here posted a uh, Discord post that's talked about uh, they're in contact with Starknet. 
um, they're going to uh, make sure that uh, they get a, a list that is inclusive of everybody. So uh, that'll be forthcoming. The token doesn't drop until February 20th. So they got a, you know got some time to work this out. And you have any thoughts uh, in general about StarkNet? It's pretty effing awesome. <laughs> yeah. So the first thing to realize is that that is not, 22% of the tokens are not going to stakers. So um, it's 22% of 700 million. And that 700 million tokens is just 7% of the 10 billion tokens that they're going to be. So the airdrop actually, you know, StarkNet got a lot of criticism here because they're really like pushing this big number. Like, you know, we're giving such amount to this many people and then such amount to this many people. And it sounds really good when you only look at the 700 million tokens that are being airdropped now. However, when you take a step back and look at this is only 7% of their total tokens, that's actually a really stingy airdrop. <laughs> like, the, yeah. the, the other protocols tend to give a lot more of a percentage of their total total tokens than sure. 7%. So a whole lot of money here is going to VCs. It's going to like the, the foundation, the, you know, the StarkNet development team and like, you know, those kind of like shady-ish things. And <clears> it's quite <throat> funny because um, David Hoffman was talking in yesterday's, like a couple of months ago about how like unaligned Starknet is with the Ethereum values and they're kind of getting some pushback and like it kind of became a meme and stuff. And the fact of the matter is like, you know, they, they, they first of all, let me be clear, right? Like they don't have to airdrop to anyone if they don't want to, but like that's just become yeah. the norm of crypto. So I'm not complaining. I am technically eligible for airdrop. So, you know, thank you for giving me free money. But um, when I get it, <laughs> like if they fix this rocket pool issue, which I think they will. But what I'm trying to say is like that they, they, they've done some things that are good, but there's also some things that still have question marks around it. And I think that, yeah. you know, we, we shouldn't, we shouldn't like let them give them, give them a pass on that just because they did some things that are good, but Hey, they're giving away free, free money. So that's what it is. And if you've got some money, congratulations. I think some people, um, you eligible up to 12 validators worth of rewards. So that's mm -hmm. 1,800 stock tokens per validator up to 12 validators people are thinking that it's going to launch at two dollars a token so the chance that people are getting nearly fifty thousand dollars like which is really fucking awesome right so yeah, yeah. congrats like you got 50k like beautiful and there are a few people like you know quite frequent commenters in the community who are eligible for that size airdrop and some people have it on multiple nodes so they might even have even more than that but that's really nice. I'm not one of those people, sadly. But hey, you know, whatever money they want to give me, I'll take it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I don't know how it's going to work out for StarkNet in the long term, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of question marks. And the fact that they fumbled mm -hmm. this airdrop, hopefully it means that future airdrops that are coming will will use better lists and like maybe right. communicate with protocols where they're giving so much of their token away. They want to make sure they do things right because it kind of puts a little bit of, of a strain on on the communities, both communities, right? Like a lot of people yesterday were asking questions like, where do I get my airdrop? What's happening with my airdrop? A few people were even fished because of it, which is really sad mm -hmm. and unfortunate. Right. And um, the StarkNet server itself, they were getting inundated with people saying, hey, I'm a Rocket Pool node operator. Where's my airdrop? Like, why did you send it to Mini Pool? Am I still going to get it? And they got those questions over and over and over again. So much so that, you know, people are just like, guys, just stop. We're working on it. Please just chill. Like, right, we're going right. to fix it. Like, just, just take a moment. But I guess with all of that kind of said, you know, congrats on the free money, but um, let, let's see what, what, what comes next. And I think, you know, there's kind of mutterings going on that we can expect a whole bunch more airdrops coming to stakers. And what's really great is like this rocket pool node operators have kind of been lumped in with solo stakers and we're kind of like getting the same level of reward. So Jasper Prout tweet yesterday, which again, you know, in Jasper's great, um, a flag bearing uh, style is really cool. He's like, look, if you had 32 ETH and you were a solo staker, you get one airdrop. If you became a rocket pool node operator, you brought, um, you know, 16 plus 16 and then 3.2 ETH worth of RPL. So you had to bring 35 ETH basically, um, but then you got twice the airdrop. So that pretty much covers right. the cost of most of that RPL pretty much like, well, not most of it, but like a big chunk of that cost and you've been getting all these extra rewards and stuff. So, you know, the argument that rocket pool node operators can hopefully do pretty well with this in the coming months, I think that's really exciting because there's a whole bunch of, um, services coming online like zk sync era going to have an airdrop taiko will have an airdrop scroll would have an airdrop 
Eigen there is going to be a big one. And it seems like people who are kind of like in the know are saying that most of these services will be dropping to solo stakers and with that rocket pool node operators. So we're going to be getting some nice gifts coming our way, hopefully in the coming months. And that might make something that, you know, people will see and be like, Hey, these guys are getting these really cool rewards. Maybe I should join them and make myself eligible for these rewards when they come up in the future as well. Right. Yeah. When I said 20, 20%, I've, I've been meaning 20% of the of, yeah, 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 700 yeah. million. Yeah. Of course it's not, you know, they've got almost almost all of the tokens still in their vault they're not mm -hmm. they're, right so yeah. yeah it was stingy seven percent is yeah you know yeah. roll you know roll your eyes but um one thing to point out is that the for stakers they're rewarding those who had validators online before the merge mm -hmm. okay so if you're more recent you're gonna miss out on this one yeah i have a feeling though whack that going forward you know, StarkNet is kind of set maybe a new trend where mm -hmm. stakers will be part of that allocation with other protocols that are going to airdrop, but perhaps future protocol airdrops were, are going to, maybe they'll include more folks who stake after the merge as well, mm -hmm. because those people feel left out. And if, so if you're in the next guy, maybe you're ZK Sync, you're like, you know, there's a lot of pushback, those stakers who Hey, they set up a note on September 16th, 2022, one day after, and they, they've been staking for 18 months and they, mm -hmm. you know, maybe we should give them something too. So yeah. I, 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 you know, if I had a bet 10 bucks, I'd say that, you know, perhaps those more recent validators will be rewarded at some point too. I think the, the cutoff will be withdrawals because at that point, you know, staking became a lot less there were fewer unknowns about it like you know first we didn't know whether there was even going to be a merge right which is kind of this huge thing so like you know those people they're really bought into the ETH, ethereum vision right like these were people who were the vanguard of staking and yeah. that stark there saying yeah you're going to be rewarded for that because at that point we didn't know what was going to happen we didn't know if the merge was going to be successful or a failure like you guys took a huge risk so congrats on that you know here we're going to throw some tokens your way maybe going forwards it might be that people will be like yeah you know you you stake before withdrawals good job great job like here you go you get some tokens i think the one of the issues that you, you should keep in mind as well is that the number of validators who came online after the merge and then again the number of validators who came online after withdrawals like mm -hmm. was huge jumps and as you get more and more validators coming online, it becomes really difficult to find out who's, what kind of validator they are. And you're kind of opening yourself up for a lot of like blowback uh, by community members saying, hey, I'm a solo staker and I wasn't on this list, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you just need like a few hundred of those people, which is very easy to miss, right? You know, when you've got 10,000 potentially like stake from home operators, it's very easy to miss those people or 5,000, whatever it is, you're going to miss a few hundred. And then, you know, your Discord is, or your Twitter is going to be swamped for days with those people saying, where's my token, where's my token, right? So I think teams might take a bit more conservative stance. And as these lists mm. get better, then they might like, you know, make it more more open to people so there's a lot of right. unknowns about this but um it's something to just think about i guess sure yeah okay on to our last um thing we're going to talk about the liftoff uh that ken has put together and you know it's it's just really professional um uh, you and i are going to be MC on this uh, mm -hmm. um you're uh we got to when we talk about smart nodes Houston upgrades, mega pools, grants and bounties, um, the fun thrills and excitement monitoring MEV. Wow, that sounds like, <laughs> that sounds exciting. Uh, rescue nodes, um, Rocket School, Vera Theorem. Uh, that's Romana's little project, if I'm saying that right. Uh, understanding the IMC, introduction to Rocket Sweep, DVT integration, um, working in Web3 by Fornax. Uh, Rocket Pool's Endgame with uh, Jasper, um, ecosystem integrations with Grant. Um, then we got Eigenlayer, um, it's going to make a presentation. Um, Wanderer from Con um, NodeSet, we'll talk about Constellation. And then, um, you know, David from the team will have the closing. So uh, a really robust agenda that is going to be coming um, as part of the ETH Denver a uh, little side conference uh, that Ken's put together. So I'm excited about it. How about you? 
yeah, it's going to be awesome. Like uh, this, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Like Ken is doing such a great job organizing this whole event and he is putting together really, well, he has put together a really great one and a half, nearly two day um, conference. And um, I think like the Rocky Pool booth is going to be like a ghost, <laughs> ghost, like ghost, whatever it is, like a graveyard, like with nobody there because everybody's going to be at this side event. Um, and yeah, that, that's going to be cool. But I think you know, we're going to have hundreds of people, a whole lot of people who are, you know, in the Rocky Pool community and staking already, um, like, you know, potentially dozens of those people, but also a much bigger contingent of people who are like Rocket Pool curious or staking curious because there's some really cool talks there that like are just more than just um, Rocket Pool stuff. Like, you know, that, that apply to other things as well. So I think um, it's going to be really great fun for um, Rocket Poolers definitely, but also for other people who come along and there's going to be good food and good coffee and if nothing else, then you know your. You'll be there people. signing autographs. You get your uh, yeah, take fan clubs. Like sure, <laughs> like you know, two people who come along to do that. That's fine, but um, <laughs> it, it'll be really, it'll be really great fun. I think, I think it's going to be yeah. a blast. And uh, I'm really so excited. you got to win this week. Yeah, like I just think the green candles are the win that everybody was kind of waiting for, and sadly, like not with Rocket Pool, like we talked about in the beginning of the show, but like the crypto community as a whole i think more and more people are starting to believe now that the the bull market is real and like you know we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna have a good 12 months ahead or 18 months potentially maybe two years who knows but um the the btc etfs are really i think have surprised a lot of people with their inflows and they like the gold is actually like experiencing outflows on the etfs now and btc getting inflows so maybe it's a changing of the guard you know like a, a shift in in the psychology of the market and to see crypto in a new way and you know we've been we've been here for you know multiple years already and now it's kind of feels like a vindication of that so that's that's definitely a win for me that is a that is a great win mm-hmm. um my win is um the airdrop for the state uh the stakers um yeah. you know though we're those especially at genesis like if you were there in December of, was it December 21? 21 or 20, yeah. 21, no, 20, December 20. Was yeah. it December of 2020? Like yeah. this is brand new. The beacon chain hasn't launched and you're throwing in 32 ETH, man, risky. Yeah. And then those who maybe came in after Genesis, you still got the merge, the you know biggest network upgrade in human history, you know, all the risk that mm-hmm. that entailed and you, you, you stuck through it. Um, then you had, you know, of course you put the money in, you couldn't take it out. There's no withdrawals. This is mm-hmm. a one way street. Yeah. Holy cow. That is risky. So to see those people rewarded of this first, uh, big airdrop of 2024, that's a big win. And, um, yeah. I, I, I want to thank, you know, people like Anthony Sassano who were out there really advocating for this. <clears throat> yeah. I think hats off to him, but for everybody, I think it's great. Wonderful. Yeah. Everybody loves some free money. Ah, free money, five digits. <laughs> That's, that'd be amazing. Anyways, uh, thanks for listening and watching and being part of the Rocket Pool community. Um, Wack and I really appreciate you tuning in. Make yeah. sure you like and subscribe, and we will see you all next week. And you'll see me later today. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs>